Miniature Farms has been breeding Arabian horses now for the last 12 years. Uh, however, we were both breeding horses separately prior to that with Doyle being from Canada, breeding with his family since he was born and also my family in Sydney growing up breeding horses right the way through. Successful Arabian stud in our eyes really come down to three things and that's passion, patience and elbow grease. You have to have the passion for these animals and the whole industry to go through the ups and the downs and, and being with these wonderful creatures. You need the patience to allow them to mature and do things at their time and you certainly need the hard work and determination that comes through with the elbow grease to make it all come together. We find that our priority always bases with our mare families and the genetics based within those mare families. We, we think that our progeny come from our fantastic mares that, that stand in our paddock, they, they have great qualities, the great dispositions and they pass those on to their progeny. The stallions for us are obviously important also but they have to be so strong in what they do. They have to genetically pass on something every time that they're breeding and something that's improving every mare that they cover. We're, we're very blessed this year that we have leased a stallion called SF Surreal from America from Peakview Arabians and he's come out I believe the first stallion ever to have been within the Arabian industry, what we would call a shuttle stallion within the thoroughbred range, flying out just for this breeding and show season so he's been campaigned throughout Australia as a show horse and he's also covering mares whilst he's here in Australia and will fly back to America again in May June next year at the completion of his breeding and show duties. We take a lot of influence from the rest of the world, but because we're so disjointed from the rest of the world, we don't get direction from one particular spot only. We're not European totally influenced. We're not American totally influenced. It's a really nice uh, way, a blend of, of the rest of the world put together with the different genetics that come to this country, the styles in which the horses are shown and presented, both saddle and lead. And um, it's, Australia has, because of that, has a really diverse genetic gene pool that we can offer back to the world. Uh, where a lot of those other worlds are sort of closed off or countries are closed off being accessible to themselves and have a high volume of genetics from within their own domestic area where Australia now can branch back out and offer genetics that has a wonderful blend that's worked very well that hasn't really been uh, achieved in other parts of the world. So our international export market is opening up because of that because we've been able to create these really, really functional horses that are still beautiful and very good-minded and trainable horses. Um, but some of our, certainly our personal highlights are breeding a couple of our main breeding stallions now. We have the purebred stallion Crave FF that went on to be one of the, the most winningest junior colts here in the country when he was being shown, winning across all states in, in Australia. The other one's the Anglo stallion called Concerto FF that's uh, been an amazing halter horse and still currently being a show horse now and, and really just developing into his own as a saddle horse. So having those two that are now, we believe, quality to be breeding stallions that have also been part of our breeding program and have came through are certainly highlights for us. But we're just, um, it's, a, it's always amazing for us at the end of every show season to realize the quality of the horses that the clients are always sending to us and being so lucky to be involved with such a great number of horses across all the different registries within the Arabian sector. Um, you know, there's, it's, hard to, it's hard to pinpoint particular horses because we're blessed every single year and it's always a fantastic ride. The Arabian breed in Australia is going from strength to strength. We, we have countless Arabian shows all across the country. Um, we have many breeders. The Arabian horse not only is great for a show and, and pleasure animal, but they are huge with the endurance market, pleasure market, pony club horses, things like that. So we are very blessed that the Arabian horse is so versatile and it, and it helps with the promotion of the Arabian horse across the board. Um, some of our tips that we'd certainly give away to people that are wanting to get into the industry, and especially breeders, is to take it slow. Don't go out and buy your first breeding colt as your first horse. Buy a mare, stay involved with the industry from all aspects, right through from our performance base with the endurance horses, or now even the Arabian race horses through to the show horses. Uh, don't have your blinkers on. Really ask a lot of questions. Spend a lot of time with a lot of different people. Everybody has different opinions and uh, views and you'll eventually form your own opinion and views based off uh, the world around you and, and uh, definitely going to the horse shows, seeing the quality of the other animals. It's very easy for somebody to say they have a national champion that they want to sell you but it's another thing to go out and prove it and to have those successful horses that are there. 
any horse can win something once, just like a racehorse, and any horse can lose something once. But over time, five, six, ten, a dozen shows, you will start to form an average of the quality of that animal based on professional judges' opinions of it. If you're always at the top end of the class, the bottom end of the class, and being happy with what you can achieve with your horses. And our sort of our golden rule is is always try to purchase the best horse you can because it costs the same to feed a bad horse as it does a good horse. So your initial investment is always uh, is mediocre compared to what you're going to spend for the rest of the time that you're involved with those animals. I have to say the favourite time of the day for me is when the kids come home from school and jump on their ponies and gallop around the farm and have some fun and shows the temperaments of the horses that we've been blessed with with the kids and, and our kids' abilities to start having fun and enjoying the horses as we have. Uh, and also spending time out with the babies, the mares and foals out in the paddock and watching them grow up and see what we've created. It's great. And for me it's certainly along those same lines but it's also nice the very end of the day, just while there's still some light left in that day, everybody's gone home, the horses are put to bed, they're still munching on their dinners, and you're just doing that final walk-through check and everybody's peaceful, and you just remind yourself the quality that surrounds you and, the, and these wonderful animals, and it's such a peaceful way to end the day to stroll through that barn and head down to the house.